السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله. Uh, I'm ready to start. What time we should start? دقائق بس بجد. مو مشكلة، أوكي. قولوا لي وقت ما يجي الوقت. I'm just told that you can start. Okay, salam alaikum. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Jed Bernawi, cardiac surgery resident in uh, South Bakhtin Cardiac Center in the Eastern Province. Uh, this lecture is supervised by Dr. Abdullah Lutega, our program director, consultant in uh, South Bakhtin as well. So my topic is about uh, minimal invasive direct coronary artery bypass graft, or what is uh, uh, phrased as a mid cap. Uh, my outline. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna speak about off pump cart uh, coronary artery bypass, uh, what's called off cap, uh, minimal invasive direct coronary artery bypass, mid cap also. Um, total or complete coronary vascularization via left anterior thoracotomy, TC rat or T cart, um, total endoscopic coronary artery bypass grafting, T cap, uh, or what is uh, robotic uh, endoscopic total revascularization, and also hybrid uh, revascularization, the com combination between PCI and uh, mid cap. Uh, finally, I'm going to speak a little bit about the endoscopic conduit harvesting. Okay. As an introduction, uh, median sternotomy considered as a potential source for morbidity due to increased risk of deep external wound infection and mediastinitis. Um, so the delayed return to the delay activity, daily activity, sorry. Uh, accordingly, a number of uh, surgical strategies have evolved to avoid the need of uh, cardiopulmonary bypass to minimize also the surgical incision. Uh, no touch technique to avoid the aortic cross clamp uh, for people who have uh, calcific aorta that you they will be predisposed to stroke and thrombotic uh, events. Um, that's an uh, also, let us think about another approach. Uh, endovascular harvesting may be improve uh, wound healing in diabetic patients. So first of all, uh, off-cap. Uh, so the off-pump uh, surgery, I'm gonna dive in directly to the steps. Uh, basically, what is the difference between the off-pump and on-pump? Uh, initially, the same, median sternotomy, um, harvesting the mammary, the usual fashion. Uh, then the hibernization will be a half dose of uh, the, the, the conventional uh, sternotomy, about 150 to 200 units per kg. Uh, the pericarditomy or the pericardial incision will be uh, the inverted T, but it will be widely open. Uh, 
uh, from both sides to allow the heart more compensation regarding because the heart is beating, not the, uh, uh, decompensated. Um, then we'll, we apply the stabilizer or the positioner. I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures. Uh, after that, we're gonna dissect out the coronary artery segment and prepare the memory at the same time. Uh, after dissecting the coronary artery segment, uh, we can uh, apply some cauterization epicardial uh, about 10 to 20 uh, um, pressure or then um, you can uh, make uh, a P epicardial incision for cyelastic tape to uh, control the bleeding from the coronary. First of all, you keep it unsnared. Once you are uh, uh, dissect or uh, dissect that uh, arteriot, you make your arteriotomy incision, then you snare the tape to decrease the flow, most uh, likely proximally rather than distally. Then you insert the intracoronary shunt. There is different sizes according to the caliber of the coronary. Uh, after you make your anastomosis uh, in the um, usual fashion, uh, into side anastomosis, at the last uh, stitch, you're going to remove the intercoronary shunt, and then uh, you, you can uh, reperfuse the, the vessel. While doing that, you can use uh, the, the help of uh, the, the CO2 flower or the Mr. Flower. Uh, so some special maneuvers uh, regarding the off pump, um, the RCA can cause bradycardia. So that's why all the time, uh, actually in off pump uh, cases, we keep uh, looking at the monitor, uh, watching for ST elevation, uh, arrhythmia. Uh, doing the lift circumflex is very challenging, it, uh, especially if it's close to the AV group. Uh, opening the pleura is helpful as the heart compensate, as I said, um, reflects the tachyarrhythmia can decrease the cardiac output. Uh, you always keep watching for SC segment changes because uh, you are working the beating heart and uh, uh, the coronary flow is um, not uh, with the cardiopegia or something, it's an outcome. Um, the LAD diagonal and the lift system, uh, you put the patient to help in positioning uh, in reverse strangling bird and uh, right side, so you can have more exposure. And the RCA and the PTA, you rotate the table toward the left side. So mainly this special maneuvers because of the main uh, positioning or the main tricks of the off pump, which is positioning. It's really what can make difference. Uh, so continuing, we can uh, apply the suction devices. Uh, for example, uh, we have uh, the octopus, this one, uh, which is basically a, a suction device that can fixate the heart. It has a suction with this limb and the other limb is uh, the hind flexible linch to fixate the heart. So you make the suction on, then you fixate it at the target vessel so if that fixate the uh, the vessel and you can work uh, properly or focused on that vessel. And this is the intracoronary shunt we can see. This is a tape come from it that you can pull or uh, push or uh, adjust to pre keep perfusing the, the vessel or the coronary. This is the apical stabilizer, same as the octopus, but this is the apical or the starfish also called. Uh, so the pressure or traction stabilizer is used for intracranial or myocardial shunt in distal anastomosis. Use of CO2 flower instead of, uh, uh, of, uh, of um, injecting saline. And uh, can I ask uh, why? I don't know who is the modulator. If you can raise a question. Why we uh, we cannot use the saline or irrigation into the vessels to prevent the 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 blood instead of using the CO two flower? Anyone, please. Any volunteer? All right. 
So uh, basically, the, the acidic base uh, pH, uh, which can lead to arrhythmia and uh, hemodynamic disturbance. That's why we, we don't use normal saline. And instead, we, uh, we, we use the CO2 flower or the mixer flower. Uh, okay, uh, what are the indications and the contraindications for the off pump? So one of the uh, number one indication for the off pump is the experienced center and experienced surgeon. This is uh, highly uh, recommended, uh, even the study in the coming slide that I'm gonna mention. Uh, now touch technique is highly aterolytic or calcified aorta for specific patients, elderly, for example. Uh, patients who are having a recent MI, uh, patients who have uh, renal impaired uh, function that uh, they, they need a revascularization for three vessel disease. So uh, here where, where, where the off pump came as a prior. Uh, impaired LV function, uh, people who have ejection fraction less than 20, this is uh, can be indicated for off pump. And instead the contraindication, uh, patients who have deep chest, because of difficulty of positioning and um, uh, well, well, putting the suction or the stabilizer. Uh, large heart, uh, people who have uh, card uh, uh, cardiomegaly, that, that will be difficult to access the vessels, different vessels. Uh, people who have uh, deeply buried uh, LAD uh, that you cannot uh, reach or you need more dissection, more fixation and better to work for this kind of patient. Maybe you better go on pump and decompensate the heart instead of irritating the heart of pump. Uh, people who have a severe MR and people who have severe hemodynamic instability because patients already need to be put in inotropes and to adjust their uh, hemodynamics according to, to positioning the heart. Uh, some advantages of each, if we, uh, if we are comparing the on-pump and off-pump. Uh, off-pump, uh, it's an um, uh, avoidance of cannulation, complication, uh, dissection, uh, etc. Um, on pump, instead, uh, you have the, the favor of clear field. The heart is uh, fully decompensated. You get cardioplegia. You work peacefully without any uh, blood coming in your uh, face. Uh, people who have high mortality can benefit from off pump. Uh, and instead, the uh, on pump uh, myocardial protection. Uh, also, less cardiac enzymes releases because you are not stressing the heart by putting them on uh, on the machine on the, on the heart lung machine. Uh, instead, then on pump more systemic inflammatory response. Uh, people who have high risk of a stroke can benefit from uh, off pump as well. While uh, we, we, you you get you get worried with the with the same kind of people while doing on pump, but um, in a range of a stroke one percent trade, uh, that's fine. Uh, off pump uh, they have uh, less length of stay, uh, less than maybe four days, uh, and instead of on pump uh, four to seven days average length of stay. Uh, in off pump again, decreased renal failure, less bleeding, um, um, transfusion. People who uh, patients who have uh, restonotomy before AF and uh, preoperative MI can benefit most. Uh, while uh, well, the advantage of uh, on pump uh, hemodynamic and respiratory control by putting them in the heart lung machine, um, lower incidence of CVA. Uh, by cross clamp and uh, um, uh, well perfusing the heart, incomplete uh, revascularization. So conversion from off pump to on pump ranged from one to 20%. Uh, the timing versus the status uh, uh, is the make difference. Uh, I mean, when the patients are hemodynamically stable or having life threatening arrhythmia. So, uh, what usually do uh, in the OR, uh, we, we place the cannulation 
some surgeon actually, uh, I, I have worked with two surgeons. Some of them, they place the cannula and keep it steady just in case we plan to urgently shift or the patient get irritated by arrhythmia, uh, arrhythmia or uh, VF. Uh, others, they are, no, they, they, they're just doing the purse string and the snare and that's it. So the plan versus uh, the, uh, the unhealed or plan versus the urgent uh, off pump. If, if we go early and elective conversion, which uh, as I mentioned, you put your cannula, the, your aortic cannula, venous cannula, you snare them, you, you, make, you fixate your line, you prime your uh, machine, you are ready to, to go at any time. You are ready plan. So safely converging to uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. While uh, the emergent, uh, so you, you're gonna lose some time while the patient's already hemodynamically unstable electrically and uh, uh, electrical wise, and even uh, the patients having arrhythmia, uh, maybe you, uh, you have some AC elevation, uh, that will cause ultimately to high morbidity and high mortality rates to shift them to on pump. So some of the study that I uh, I uh, uh, go along with uh, off pump versus on pump coronary artery bypass grafting uh, systemic review and uh, analysis of clinical outcome. Uh, um, this is in the journal of the cardiothoracic and vascular nephesia. Uh, so uh, they conclude that off pump uh, safe alternative to cabbage, however, uh, is technically challenging and lacks long-term benefit compared to on pump respect to clinical outcome. So what we can get from these two lines is uh, need to be experienced surgeon and it has um, a higher rate of free vascularization. Uh, the off pump uh, procedure are associated with the reduced blood transfusion and reduced risk of prolonged hospital stay because the patients, they are not in phase of uh, cardiopulmonary bypass again. So they have uh, lesser uh, chance to blood transfusion, infection, and uh, risk of prolonged uh, hospital stay. Uh, generally, uh, these benefits are outweighed by the risk of uh, ineffective revascularization and procedure has therefore fallen out of favor. Um, and this is the, the, the big pitfall of, of pump, that the rate of revascularization because of uh, positioning and uh, the, the working in the, um, uh, in the um, intracoronary shunt, piss blower, so you may miss some anastomotic line and patients get back again with the uh, stenotic or uh, uh, thrombotic uh, vessel. Um, other studies or meta-analysis um, of repeat revascularization of off-pump and on-pump coronary artery bypass and the uh, annals of, uh, of thoracic surgeon that's been released in 2018. Uh, they randomized uh, 11,200 patients uh, between on-pump and um, uh, off-pump and on-pump. Um, and they conclude the result of this meta-analysis suggests uh, the com in comparison in between two, uh, there is increased repeat re revascularization rate in the first year follow-up, but does not affect the five-year follow-up. This is the bottom line of this meta-analysis. Um, the long-term mortality, it weighted mean the follow-up uh, the time across the 19 studies that reported long-term mortality was 3.7 years, ranges from one to seven and a half years. The overall mortality rate in the, in the follow-up was 12% in off-pump versus 11% in the on-pump series. And, uh, and they were uh, borderline in the, in the middle line always between 1.1 1, 1. 1, uh, incidence rate ratio. Uh, so it's aesthetically um, uh, significant and the p-value is significant in most of the studies, especially the biggest studies um, like Ruby and coronary studies. Uh, so the Ruby trial, one of the famous trials uh, that 
um, uh, uh, scheduled for uh, tw uh, 2,000 patients um, for urgent and elective cabbage uh, to either on pump or off pump. Uh, the primary short term and endpoint was to composite of death or complications. Uh, for example, reoperation, new mechanical support, cardiac arrest, coma, stroke, renal failure before discharge or within 30 days after surgery. And they conclude at one year of follow up, a uh, patient with, in, uh, with the off pump group uh, do worse to composite outcome and poorer graft patency than they did when, uh, uh, of on pump uh, patients. And there was no significant difference between the techniques were found in the neurophysiological outcome or use of major sources. Uh, this is the Ruby trial. Uh, the coronary trial we're going to speak of uh, today, uh, the, the last uh, lecture, I think, but just briefly to mention uh, a total of 4,750 patients from 90 19 countries. Uh, who had coronary artery uh, randomly assigned undergo off pump and on pump, analyzed and the composite outcome of the death, stroke, myocardial infarction, renal failure, or repeat coronary vascularization. Uh, they conclude the rate of the composite outcome of death, uh, stroke, or MI, renal failure, repeat revascularization again. At five years of follow-up was similar among the patients who underwent off pump and on, on pump, and those who are both uh, both like yes. Yeah. So the Ruby showed reduced survival in the off pump, whereas the coronary showed lack of difference in long-term outcome between the two arms. Uh, having things said that the Ruby trials, however, criticized because of less strict number of cases that required surgeon who performing off pump. So it was widely uh, spread between uh, other centers, not only the, the highly experienced centers in off pump. So shifting gears up to uh, the next uh, outline, which is the mid cap. Uh, mid cap, as I mentioned before, the minimal invasive direct coronary artery bypass, what is it? Uh, it is the, the preferred method of surgical revascularization for isolated lima to LAD only. So the valuable is alternative to standard cabbage or off pump in selected high risk patients, for example, patients who have extensive comorbidities who are at uh, prohibitively um, high risk for sternotomy or cardiopulmonary bypass. Uh, uh, basically, uh, since the, the, these patients, uh, they are doing uh, anterior thoracotomy, they are prone to single line ventilation achieved by using double human tube or Prankos blocker to provide the selective right line ventilation. So uh, what are the indications of the, the inclusion criteria? Uh, sorry, this slide a little bit crowded, but just to subdivide it, there is a favor of uh, coronary anatomy and comorbidities. For the coronary anatomy, um, uh, um, left main disease with a normal RCA, multiple vessel disease with medium to large PDA, or complex proximal left side lesion with or without large branch involvement. With, uh, or also previous unsuccessful stenting. Uh, this is in favor of coronary anatomy. Uh, for comorbidities, people who are at risk for uh, problems of median sternotomy, uh, long-term steroid use, severe COPD, uh, advanced age, need of another major procedure, uh, or people who have uh, severe deconditioning or they cannot, they have, uh, they, ischemic um, uh, symptoms, patient with uh, arthritic or orthopedic problems, uh, patients who wants to, uh, patients, yani, wish, patients who wants to do the surgery, these also can uh, be included. So what are the contraindications for the mid-cap? Um, emergency cases, hemodynamic instability, instability, this is a clear contraindication. But uh, some potential contraindications, patients who have previous cabbage, uh, re-sternotomy, uh, you're gonna rethink about them. 
um, morbid obesity. Uh, it's gonna be challenging in surgeon. Uh, patient with posterior lateral uh, branch disease. Patient who have ejection fraction less than 20%. Uh, peripheral vascular disease, moderate to severe AI. These patients, you're gonna uh, think of uh, to, for them to do mid cap instead of other modality. So let's have some video. I'll make it bigger. I want to increase the size of the screen. Is the voice is hearable? How can I increase the size of the screen? Uh, I, I think you have to end the slideshow and then. Uh, I have to end the. Yeah. Me? Try, I don't know. Okay. When it's my voice, we can't hear it. No, it's still, I cannot uh, maximize it. Woman with history of uh, so let's uh, sh make the, share the screen again. Let's see, is that fine? Uh, let's see how it's going, if it's clear to everyone or I should let's see to go. With history of hypertension. So it's I'll uh, skip the part of um, history and uh, clinical scenario. So basically they did an angio and they found the LID, they try to tackle it with the angio. Okay. So here we go. Uh, they are identifying the, the line of incision as a left anterior thoracotomy at the mid clavicular line. They are doing a horizontal uh, incision, dissecting the, the muscles, mainly the pectoralis muscle. They dive in to incise now to get the uh, mammary. They put a special retractor to separate the, uh, the ribs. Just this graft is required, so it's important that it's harder, it's harvested without. And then harvesting the mammary. It's mandatory to mobilize the artery at the highest possible. And the lima. And they can get the use of the video uh, also scope to get the um, proper length of, uh, of uh, the lima because it's really small incision. Now they are doing the pericarditomy after harvesting that uh, mammary. Doing the pericardial stitch. Now they are defining the target LED. So they are positioning the uh, suction or the sublizer the device. This is the suction attached to it. Then they are applying the stabilizer. See how it's fixed the, the part that they are doing. Then they are dissecting the coronary, the poker.
Okay, now they are preparing the memory. Make the incision after the Okay, now we resize the this is uh, the I think the cellistic um, snail or no this is a sorry uh, uh, epicardial stitch to make a bit of exposure and then they put the intracranary shunt now they are starting the anastomosis and this is the Mr. Flower to inflate the mammary of the coronary and to give a good uh, clear field. Now with the first shooting technique, they are getting close to the mammary, close to the coronary, continuing the anastomosis. So in the last stitch, as we said in the up pump, we are gonna release the intracranary shunt to make some blood come and to de-air. And we're gonna de-air also after with the insulin saline. We cut the session stitch, we remove the bulldog so we can produce the coronary. And that's it. So this is uh, the mid cap. So it's a single uh, basal uh, anterior trochotomy uh, procedure to revascularize uh, minimum invasively. Another type of uh, procedure, uh, the total or complete uh, revascularization with anterior trochotomy or left anterior trochotomy. This is uh, a really interesting and uh, newly invented uh, pro uh, type of uh, seizure, uh, procedures, which is combined the on pump with the mid cap, or we can say not also the mid cap because it's a multivisal uh, uh, multivisal revascularization with the cross clamp. So um, the main limitation of this uh, minimal invasive coronary artery revascularization technique had been technically difficult. Uh, longevity of the procedure, complex technology, and uh, long learning curve, and very, very selection of uh, patients. So the, there is one article that describes it very nicely, uh, complete coronary revascularization via left anterior trochotomy. They concluded that uh, the, this type of surgery or operation is important in our opinion, in their opinion, sorry, because it had completely eliminated the sternotomy and decreased the invasiveness of uh, uh, the invasiveness of uh, cabbage, while preserving the key principle of complete revascularization. So that's why what I meant by combination, uh, with uh, along with universal applicability of multivisal diffuse coronary artery disease. In their experience, the, the TICRAT or the CEVAST is the safe and effective technique of minimal invasive cabbage and routinely they apply for all patients, ex uh, excluding patients with the uh, first line award who require isolated primary coronary artery bypass. So they have a really nice picture they uh, put. So basically here, uh, the, they put their, the, their type of incision uh, the landmarks. So they first identify the sternum and the ribs. Away from the ribs, about uh, one to two centimeters, they draw a line until the inferior border of the uh, left uh, nipple. Uh, so positioning the patient in this way with extending their arm if the radial artery is uh, harvested. Uh, then uh, the same as the previous um, anterior trochotomy, start incision horizontally five to four centimeter, uh, dissecting the muscle, separating the ribs with the retractor. Um, some of them they retracted with the with the rib retractor, small retractor, so they can get the lima nicely. Then after that, 
after getting the, the mammary and uh, with the, uh, whether it's clotinized or uh, pedicle fashion, then they can apply the retractor, the right retractor, so that they can uh, uh, fixate or they anastomose the, the mammary to, uh, to the LAD. Uh, the, they have another opening and uh, above the second intercostal space to put the shit wood clamp to clamp the aorta. And at the same time, they can settle their uh, cardioplegia and uh, the cannulation site from the same opening. Uh, these snares or tape that they are putting to mobilize or uh, to uh, get control of the vessels and uh, award uh, then the PV, uh, the lift uh, pulmonary veins, and the IBC. Uh, after putting these tapes and they organize it in this way for each of them, then they can uh, take a distance of uh, um, the vessel or the coronary, especially the, the lift circumflex, how far it goes from that uh, incision. Then uh, they can do all, also the PDA anastomosis because the heart is de decompensated, is uh, easy to be done with the, this small incision. Then the vein uh, to proximal anastomosis also done. And the uh, final uh, result, only this incision, inframammary. So it's really interesting and nice to be considered. Uh, next is the TCAP or uh, the to total endoscopic uh, coronary artery bypass. Uh, this type of surgery that done by telemanipulation assisted cardiac uh, surgery device or the robotic or the Da Vinci system. Uh, they have uh, two main limbs of, uh, or the two main uh, type of um, things that they are doing with these devices, the inputting manipulator or the executing manipulator. The input with the surgical console or the master console, away from the patient inside in the operating room, the executing manipulator or the slave console, as they said, uh, said it in the, in the in the Lawrence, which is uh, situated in the patient side, including the exchangeable endoscopic instruments, endoscopic camera, etc. Uh, this is a simple picture. I'm gonna show you a video about the, the probes that it differed. Some of them put uh, four uh, limbs, some of them put uh, five limbs. The places are different also, but most of them, they put the right arm below the second the coastal space between the third and two. Uh, the next is the camera, uh, the left arm, and the extra arm also. So it's a four limbs, yeah. So let's see the, the video. Uh, so one of the pioneers, uh, Dr. Professor Balkhi, for this type of surgery. In the following video, you will see two separate anastomotic techniques. That's the following port disease in his LED and the death. And robotic ports in the second, fourth, and sixth intercostal spaces. An Sorry. additional robotic arm is placed subcostally. This is the and a sealed accessory port is placed in the second intercostal arm. space. In order to maintain space in the chest, CO2 in the inflation is used at a pressure of 10, line. since our technique does not use cardiopulmonary bypass. At this so point after of the procedure, the, the left internal mammary has already been skeletonized and our coronary targets have been picked. Our first anastomosis will be created this is after a skeletonized uh, uh, mammary. They have a, a special this device, device that they are using for high quality for example, and coronary some of them using interrupted some of stainless steel flips. staples. A special one. The flex A is brought into the chest via the 15 millimeter second intercostal accessory port. It is rotated 180 degrees for loading and held in place. So this is to via to say a robotic the, the coronary forcep from the subcostal and port. the mammary, sorry. So the they can start their anastomosis. They use to load the internal mammary onto the stapler, being sure only to grab the admin tissue as well as the stapler. Once in proper position, and the bedside the assistant lowers arms, the weight guards. They start Only the tissue between these two guards will be incorporated the into the anastomosis. anastomosis. 
and the stapler is then flipped 180 degrees. A suction cardiac stabilizer is then right. This is a special stabilizer or the, the suction stabilizer that they are putting. A saddle loop snare will include the vessel proximally while a water jet from the stabilizer arm. This is like the, the, the elastic tape or to control or to glue the uh, LAD. And here is the suction, same as off pump with the CO2 power on it, on it, all controlled with the arm of the robotics to move the, the, the limbs. And here is the coronary. So imagine this is the hand of the surgeon or the assistant, and this is the hand of the surgeon, or this is the second assistant and the main surgeon is doing it. And instead of this is an instrument and only one surgeon doing all of this. Well, so this is the opening is that they open and then a the small coronary. arteriotomy is created in the coronary to facilitate entry for the flex A anvil. The anvil is inserted into the coronary lumen at approximately a 45 degree angle and then moved to be parallel with the artery. Once completely inserted, it is this fired is by the bedside assistant. Open and apply the the, the the coronary, the mammary, sorry. The flex A is removed. Onto the coronary bed. And the pre placed anvil stitch is And then they start their anastomosis. The, they already here finish, I think, the last stage. The and then they remove the bulldog to be use the coronary. As explained earlier, you can see the wings of the lima that were outside of the guards of the flex A are not actually part of the anastomosis. This is uh, the flow to check flow using a the flow for the device. Uh, patency of the lima. This is able to give us multiple parameters of graft latency, including blood flow, pulsatility index, and percent of diastolic coronary flow. Then turn to doing a sequential anastomosis onto the occluded diagonal branch. This will be done this in a hand sewn where they are smoting another uh, a saddle loop snare and is brand. briefly placed proximally while we create our arteriotomy with hot scissors. So basically, this is what they are doing. This the rest of the video they are uh, smoting the other uh, branches, but it's very interesting, very effective way. Uh, Next, uh, the hybrid revascularization, because I want to be on time, uh, com uh, combining the benefits of two different procedure also means to add the hazard risk to for each by adding the, the two procedure, uh, combining the two procedures together. So uh, an indication for hybrid revascularization, people who have skeletal anomalies, for example, pseudogenesis imperfecta or the bradle bone, uh, the, the, the young people who have uh, genetic deformity in their bone that it's uh, very uh, soft that you cannot, um, uh, do, uh, yeah, I mean, it, they will be highly indicated for hybrid revascularization, um, severe osteoporosis, uh, people who are in the cultures or wheelchair dependent and uh, deep external wound infection. So basically people who have bone problems that prevent them from the incision. Patients with reduced life expectancy, such as advanced malignancy, people who have uh, life expectancy less than one year, uh, end stage uh, cardiomyopathy, advanced liver or renal failure, not amenable for transplant. So this kind of patients, they're gonna benefit the most from the hybrid. Also, uh, diabetes, severe ob uncontrolled diabetes, severe obesity, COPD, end stage peripheral vascular disease, porcelain aorta, and history of a stroke with uh, paraplegia. So, the timing or the way that they're doing it, one way or another, whether to start with the primary PCI to RCA, for example, then you uh, do the, the Lima 12 AD mid cap after six weeks. This is uh, having a high chance of free intervention. Uh, but instead, I, I think this way is better doing the cabbage than the BCI at the same sitting, on one sitting. Uh, so whether to do this or that, 
both are uh, valid as, as it mentioned in the book. So last uh, topic that I'm gonna speak of uh, is the, the, the endovascular harvesting and uh, this, uh, whether it's venous or uh, arterial. Uh, the greater saphenous vein is still frequently used for cabbage. A standard longitudinal opening of um, harvesting technique of the greater saphenous vein is associated with two to 25% wound complications rate, for example, hesins, delayed healing, infection, 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 cellulitis, sepsis, and occasionally um, limb amputation. Uh, objective sensory loss in 10% of patients for arm scar discomfort and 33% undergo to open radial artery harvest have been reported as well. And uh, before the video, we have interestingly that the study, the, the randomized trial of the endoscopic versus the open vein harvesting uh, uh, coronary artery bypass. What conclude that um, among the patients, actually there is no difference. So they, they find that the significant difference between open and uh, endoscopic and, and risk of major adverse cardiac events, uh, uh, as well what we see in practice. Uh, and uh, as I go through this uh, article, so mainly the endovascular um, with, the, with, with their probe, the apples, the branches, while an open technique doing bridging and uh, uh, all that. It depends on doing bridging or uh, a whole one opening, which can risk for infection. But at the end, there is no major difference. So showing the video for the endovascular being harvest. This is an illustration of endoscopic greater saphenous conduit and coronary artery with ultrasound. A two to three centimeter incision so is this made is of the knee. Three, uh, it depends on where you start. Is used, this incision they as well as made from the knee. Scissors, Usually we do it actually in the, and same as the, the open uh, anterior medial to the medial malleolus and do a slit. And then you dissect uh, to open for the prop and then you start see dissecting the pain. After white balancing the camera, the scope with a blunt dissector tip with the scope inserted into a two inside. to three centimeter incision near the knee medially. And the vein is located. So you take the vein, first of all, you dissect in and out, in and out into the incision to, to make the tunnel a insufflated. CO2. Back way. So initially, yeah, you insufflate the CO2 the so you can have a, a space to, to pass the scope. One of the challenges is the uh, to have a superficial vein. It's very difficult. It is important to leave the phase of the So you go in and out, in and out, the the um, proximally, distally, from the side. Then you start um, during uh, dissection. Have, um, the, the, branches, the branches, you cauterize the branches, each one by the CR scope, protecting the vein in the middle and cauterizing the branches as you are going. Once dissection is complete, the HemoPro 2 device is used to cauterize tissue and branches. And also you can dissect the tissue that attached to the vein. Or lateral tunneloplasty is often done to protect the adventitia of the vein from the equipment as well as to open up the tunnel. Actually, there is a nice uh, instrument that, that see arm like you protect the vein, you take it away, and then you cauterize. This cautery device has minimal thermal spread, protecting Safely, the, the branches. From any damage. Yeah, this one exactly. So you take out the vein and then you bring your cautery in. A C arm and you push in out can be used so you can take any branches or minimal you. tension to safely cauterize branches and tissue. Exactly. As you are going for the whole segment. Branches are well isolated with as much length as possible to allow for tying or ligating once the vein is removed. 
using an 11 blade and tonsil, a stab and grab is complete to ligate the vein proximally. So after that, you take the vein from the proximal, whether by mosquito or by bigger opening and the you ligate it with the silk stitch. And ligated proximally. And you may apply and a clip tie. and you cut. It is then transected and pulled through the incision at the knee. Then you not cut it from the distal part. You dissect. Depends on the the length Dissection that you is want. Completed. The vein is ligated. Then you prepare the vein outside. After you inflating the vein, you put your clips for each branch, and that's it. So, uh, uh, final slide. Uh, my point of view is uh, we are competing a cardiologist um, with a small incision. So, uh, whatever can take us to make lesser incision, um, avoiding the sternotomy, uh, avoiding cardiopulmonary bypass, I think it works well. Um, because we are competing a really, uh, really a small uh, PT incision that they are doing. So off pump, um, speaking of um, the, as a conclusion or summary of my uh, presentation, off pump for renal impairment disease and low ejection fraction in experience center, along with no touch technique to avoid the cross clamp is very valid. Um, this is my point of view, we, um, since we are working here on Paplen also, um, uh, with the off pump, yeah, and very frequently. Um, anterior thoracotomy procedure in cardiac surgery need a special instrumentation, multimodality between visual and video, um, and working narrow field uh, with minimal incision marks. Uh, but also, it's a very valid uh, variation of uh, minimal invasive uh, technique, uh, mid-cap, um, um, total endoscopic, left anterior thoracotomy, multiple vessel uh, revascularization, robotics, and uh, hybrid, all are promising as a future for us as a trainee. Uh, learning a minimal invasive technique gives you opportunity to deal with different white complex cases. So we have seen, uh, I'm sure, in, in, the, in the heart team meeting, some complex cases that three vessels, multiple, multiple vessel disease that they cannot, uh, they are frail, they are old, they cannot get on pump or uh, they cannot tolerate the sternotomy or the deep bone infection. Uh, the people with comorbidities. So they, they can uh, get away with the, this kind of modality. Um, type of surgery depends on uh, patient's comorbidities, as I mentioned, needs, and sometimes even wish. So getting away from cardiopulmonary bypass uh, on uh, off pump, um, coming to sternotomy in off pump, getting away with it by uh, minimal invasive, uh, mid cap uh, in single uh, disease and uh, single uh, um, artery revascularization versus the, the T cap for the total revascularization, all uh, in favor for patients need. And uh, thank you. That's it. Any question, please, or any comment, uh, Dr. Abdullah? Thank you so much, Amjad. Uh, very nice uh, presentation. Any question, any comment for uh, Amjad? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll start our... Uh, can you hear me? I'm Jad.
يس عبد الملك اي كان هير يو اي كان هير يو عبد العزيز معك اه اوكي اني كويستشن اني كومنت يا شباب Uh, we'll start the next talk, inshallah, after 10 minutes.
السلام عليكم uh, the next lecture uh, will be cabbage and acute uh, MI uh, by Dr. Khaled al um, resident from King Fahd Medical City first of all I would uh, I would like to thanks and welcome Dr. Hamid al Habib consultant cardiac uh, surgery from King Fahd Medical City he will be with us in this lecture Khaled you can you can start please Thank you, Abdelaziz, and uh, thanks to Dr. Mohamed al Habib for joining us today. Uh, my talk will be about um, uh, cabbage and acute MI. So, uh, my outlines for today's talk is about uh, acute MI and the effect of timing, uh, cardiogenic shock. How to manage and uh, what are the methods of uh, reperfusion, and moving to uh, guidelines and literature review in uh, STEMI and cardiogenic shock management, and uh, ending up with the use of uh, mechanical circulatory support, especially intraortic balloon bump. So, uh, Death from cardiovascular uh, disease uh, still the leading cause of uh, death uh, worldwide, and it's been reported that uh, in case of acute MI, 30% of patients they die before uh, reaching the hospital, and 5% they die during hospital admission. So, what are the options for uh, revascularization of colloidal vessel? We have lytic therapy, PCI, and cabbage. So uh, what are the uh, effects of timing with, uh, with occlusion? Once uh, ischemia result from coronary occlusion, it will cause an ischemic uh, changes from uh, a state of active systolic uh, shortening of the uh, myocyte to a passive systolic uh, lengthening within 60 seconds only. And with time, the occlusion for less than uh, 20 minutes uh, usually causes reversible cellular damage and depressed function with subsequent myocardial stunning and uh, reperfusion of the infarct, uh, infarcted zone uh, resulted in variable amount of salvageable uh, myocardium. And uh, occlusion for uh, after 40 minutes of ischemia followed by a reperfusion, 60 to 70 percent of the uh, ultimate infarct size is salvageable but uh, this will decrease uh, to approx approximately 10% after three hours of ischemia. And uh, after six hours, there will be a transmural uh, necrosis and this uh, evidence from animal uh, model. And uh, the exact timing in, in human bodies is more difficult to analyze uh, because of uh, collateral uh, flow, which is a major uh, determinant in uh, myocardial necrosis. So a uh, patient has ST, MI, if uh, he had a chest pain more than 20 minutes, ST segment elevation in two contiguous leads usually uh, equals or more than two millimeter in amplitude in men or 1.5 in women in uh, leads uh, V2 to V3 or one millimeter in the other contiguous chest leads or uh, the limb leads or having a new left bundle branch block or anterolateral ST depression with uh, posterior infarction. Such patients will require emergent revascularization with either a lytic therapy or PCI and early reperfusion decreases the infarct size. So what are the aims of uh, therapy? To decrease the myocardial oxygen demand and uh, to uh, support uh, uh, the circulation and to protect the threatened myocardium from the effect of uh, ischemia. So uh, disruption of coronary perfusion it can result in, in three states of uh, impaired myocardium, which can uh, which can, we can see in the, this uh, table. The infarcted myocardium has suffered a reversible myocardial cell death owing to uh, prolonged ischemia and it will not uh, benefit from uh, revascularization. Uh, for hibernating myocardium, it's uh, a state of impaired myocardial and LB uh, dysfunction 
at rest resulting from reduced coronary blood flow and uh, impaired coronary vasodilator reserve. And that can be restored to normal if uh, the uh, normal myocardial oxygen supply demand relationship has been uh, reestablished. So with hypernatic myocardium, it's defined actually as a contracti contractility depressed myocardial function secondary to severe chronic ischemia that improve clinically immediately after uh, myocardial revascularization. And uh, it could be acute or chronic and the ventricular function often improve immediately after revascularization of the appropriate uh, selected regions. Uh, for stunned uh, myocardium, when we have a left ventricle dysfunction without cell death that occurs uh, usually following the restoration of blood flow and uh, after an ischemic uh, episode. And the primary distinction between the uh, stunned uh, myocardium and hypernatic myocardium is that in the stunned myocardium, the blood flow has been reestablished after the total occlusion. Whereas in hypernating myocardium, coronary artery obstruction and reduced uh, blood flow uh, are still present. So uh, what's the rationale for aggressive management of uh, MI reperfusion? It has been shown in uh, multiple randomized trials that uh, there, there will be a beneficial effects of early reperfusion within uh, 12 hours and possibly up to uh, 24 hours after acute MI. Uh, moving to uh, cardiogenic shock and uh, the uh, defining uh, parameters for a cardi cardiogenic shock uh, having systolic blood pressure less than uh, 90 millimeter mercury for at least uh, 30 minutes or if we need uh, to use uh, uh, anotropic support to maintain uh, such a, a pressure above uh, 90 millimeter mercury having uh, pulmonary congestion and decrease a cardiac uh, index less than 1.8 and uh, having a decreased uh, uh, stroke volume index less than 20 ml per meter square, and with elevated pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and high systemic vascular resistance, and um, uh, impaired in the organ perfusion, like uh, having altered uh, mental status or uh, cold clammy skin and uh, oliguria uh, and uh, elevated serum lactate. So uh, what's the prevalence of uh, cardiogenic shock? It's the most common cause of in-hospital mortality following MI and the mortality reaching uh, uh, up to uh, 80%. And the incidence in MI varies from uh, 2.4 to 12%. Uh, and revascularization within six hours have a survival benefit, especially in patients younger than uh, 75 years of age. So, um, the uh, uh, cardiogenic shock usually results from a loss of at least 40% of the uh, left ventricle, and patients usually have extensive uh, three vessel disease or multi vessel disease, and uh, also systemic inflammatory response. Uh, it, it does play a major role in worsening the clinical manifestation of shock, as many patients only have a moderate uh, depressed uh, ejection fraction, around 30%. Uh, this diagram shows uh, multiple mechanisms of cardiogenic shock in acute MI, uh, mainly uh, LV damage and uh, other mechanical complications which, which can lead to cardiogenic shock like ischemic MR and uh, ventricular septal rupture and uh, free wall rupture and RV damage as well. So uh, what are the uh, reperfusion strategies that we have? Uh, starting with the thrombolytic therapy, it has been shown that uh, lytic therapy decreases in hospital mortality in patients treated with uh, streptokinase and other studies comparing uh, uh, TPA with the streptokinase showed the superiority of TPA as it has more rapid and complete restoration of coronary blood flow at 90 minutes and it does improve the ventricular performance and reduces mortality 6% versus uh, 7%. And uh, it's been shown that uh, there's no benefit of adding uh, glycoprotein 2P3A inhibitors or low molecular weight heparin, and as it does increase the risk of uh, bleeding. And the risk of intracranial hemorrhage is about 1%, and the benefit of uh, lytic therapy decreases with increasing age. And uh, the role of uh, lytic therapy in cardiogenic shock, 
uh, does not seem to improve survival, but uh, it does decrease the uh, risk of uh, developing heart failure. So uh, what's the guideline recommendation with regards to uh, lytic therapy? First, in, in absence of contraindication, fibrinolytic, fibrinolytic uh, therapy should be administered in patients with STEMI at non-PCI capable hospitals where the uh, anticipated first medical contact to device time at the PCI capable uh, hospital more than 120 minutes because of unavoidable delays. And second, when lytic therapy is indicated or chosen as the primary perfusion strategy, it should be administered within 30 minutes of hospital arrival. Uh, this diagram from the uh, European Society of Cardiology 2018 uh, guidelines showing uh, a different um, uh, parameters that are that play a role in the uh, total ischemic time, having a patient uh, delay and uh, AMS uh, transport uh, delay and uh, system delay as well. So it's uh, multifactorial um, uh, causes that will uh, affect the total ischemic time uh, at the end. And uh, for patient with STEMI who is a candidate for reperfusion, if the uh, patient initially seen at PCI capable hospital, so uh, he should be sent to the, uh, to the cath lab uh, uh, within uh, 90 minutes. Uh, and uh, reperfusion accordingly. And if initially seen at PCI uh, non-capable uh, hospital, and uh, we can uh, transfer the patient for primary uh, PCI uh, in less than uh, 30 minutes, then uh, it's, uh, it's been recommended that we should uh, do so. And uh, if not, then we'll go with the lytic therapy and should be administered within uh, 30 minutes. Moving to the um, second strategy of uh, reperfusion, which is uh, a PCI. Uh, we have different categories of uh, PCI following MI. The primary PCI, which is the method of reperfusion in patients presenting with acute MI, and rescue PCI uh, because of recurrent ischemia or hemodynamic instability following uh, lytic therapy. Immediate PCI in conjunction with uh, lytic therapy, and delayed PCI after lytic therapy during the uh, intervening hospitalization, and elective uh, PCI following lytic therapy and medical management when a positive stress test is obtained during the same admission or soon uh, thereafter. And the evidence of each uh, uh, categories for the primary PCI, there are multiple studies that have demonstrated superiority of PCI to lytic therapy as it has a lower mortality rate and reinfarction stroke and intracranial hemorrhage risk. For the immediate PCI, it did not improve the uh, clinical outcome, and it was associated with uh, increased complication rate and a higher risk of bleeding and uh, emergent uh, bypasses. And for delayed PCI, it does not improve clinical outcome. Uh, for PCI combined with antiplatelet therapy, it gives a superior result than the uh, PTCA alone. And the drug eluting stents has a lower uh, composite endpoint of uh, death, the infarct in stroke, and angiographic evidence of stenosis at eight months compared to a uh, bare metal stent. Uh, BCI in cardiogenic shock, it does improve the survival uh, to 40 to 60%. And uh, in hospital survival rate, it can reach up to uh, 70% and it does improve the uh, one-year survival. So there are uh, multiple independent uh, predictors of uh, mortality in case of um, uh, acute stem and cardiogenic shock. Having uh, older uh, age, hypotension, lower stem flow, and patient with uh, multivessel disease. And patient with established or developing cardiogenic shock should be revascularized early by PCI rather than initial medical therapy with uh, lytic uh, therapy. And rescue PCI after failed lytic therapy for patients with ongoing uh, ischemia or clinical uh, compromise uh, is also recommended. Uh, moving to our business, uh, role of cabbage. Actually, cabbage has a limited uh, role in, in acute phases of uh, STEMI. 
other than uh, for cardiogenic shock. And uh, uh, there are multiple indications for uh, cabbage in, uh, in, uh, in acute MI, like uh, failed uh, PCI with ongoing uh, ischemia and cardiogenic shock, coronary anatomy not amenable or uh, not amenable for PCI, and uh, having mechanical complications of MI such as the uh, ventricular septal rupture, papillary muscle, or uh, free wall rupture. For uh, urgent cabbage, uh, in case of uh, acute MI, the uh, American uh, Heart Association and uh, SEC uh, guidelines uh, 2013, uh, it gives a class one recommendation in case of uh, coronary anatomy not amenable for PCI uh, to proceed with urgent cabbage in patients who have ongoing or recurrent ischemia, cardiogenic shock, severe heart failure other than uh, or other high uh, risk uh, features, and in case of uh, repair of mechanical uh, defects. And it's a uh, class two uh, A recommendation to use a mechanical circulatory support uh, in patients with the STEMI who are hemodynamically unstable and require urgent cabbage. And uh, for emergency cabbage within uh, six hours of symptoms who, who don't have a cardiogenic shock and are not candidate for PCR retake therapy, Cabbage is a class uh, 2B. For uh, timing of urgent cabbage in patients with the STEMI in relation to the use of uh, antiplatelet therapy, uh, aspirin should not uh, be withheld before urgent cabbage, so we should continue on it. And uh, Blavix or Ticagrelol should be discontinued at least 24 hours before urgent pump pump cabbage. And the short acting uh, IV glycoprotein 2P3A inhibitors like uh, uh, tifibatide and terofepan and abseximab. Uh, it should be discontinued at least uh, two to four hours for uh, tifibatide and terofepan and 12 hours for abseximab. And for urgent of pump uh, cabbage within uh, 24 hours of uh, Blavix or Tegagrelol administration, it might be considered, especially if the benefits of uh, prompt uh, revascularization outweighs the risk of bleeding as a class uh, 2B. And for urgent cabbage within uh, five days of uh, clobidogrel or ticagrelol administration or within seven days of uh, prasugrel administration, it might be considered, especially if the patient of uh, prompt revascularization outweighs the risk of bleeding as a class uh, 2B as well. Uh, this slide uh, summarizes the uh, newest uh, American Heart and SEC uh, guidelines 2021 in uh, patients uh, presenting with the STEMI and, uh, and cardiogenic shock with different uh, reperfusion strategies. Uh, it's more or less uh, same as the previous 2013 in, in terms of uh, STEMI and cardiogenic shock. I will not uh, touch the uh, area of uh, big debate, which is the uh, stable ischemic heart disease. So in patient with STEMI and ischemic symptoms uh, for less than uh, 12 hours, BCI should be performed to improve survival as a class one. And in patient with STEMI and cardiogenic shock or hemodynamic, hemodynamic instability, then PCI or cabbage when BCI is not feasible is indicated to improve survival irrespective of the time delay from MI onset as a class one. And in patient with STEMI who have mechanical complications, like uh, VSD uh, rupture uh, and mitral valve uh, 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 ischemic MR because of papillary muscle uh, infarction or rupture or free wall rupture, then cabbage is recommended at the time of surgery with goal of improving survival as a class one. But actually this um, has been driven uh, from a, a non-randomized uh, control trial. And as there is no uh, RCT examine the benefit of adding cabbage at the time of emergent cardiac surgery for uh, mechanical complication versus emergent surgery for the treatment of the uh, mechanical complications alone. Uh, also, there is uh, no RCT uh, has examined the benefit of emergent cardiac surgery for treatment of mechanical complications of STEMI versus uh, the initial medical uh, stabilization and delayed surgery. For patients with uh, STEMI, the evidence of failed uh, reperfusion after fibronolytic therapy, then rescue PCI of the infarcted artery 
should be performed to improve clinical outcomes uh, as a class one. And for patients with STEMI who are stable and presenting 12 to 24 hours after symptoms onset, then PCI is reasonable to improve clinical outcome as a class 2A. And for patients with STEMI in whom a PCI is not a feasible or successful with a large area of a myocardium at risk, emergent, emergent or urgent cabbage, then can be effective as a reperfusion modality to improve clinical outcome as a class 2A. And in patients with STEMI, complicated with uh, ongoing uh, ischemia, acute severe heart failure, or life-threatening arrhythmia, then PCI can be beneficial to improve clinical outcomes, irrespective of, of time delay from uh, MI onset as a class 2A. And in asymptomatic stable uh, patient with STEMI who have a totally occluded uh, infarcted artery more than uh, 24 hours after uh, symptom onset, and without evidence of severe ischemia, then PCI should not uh, be performed as a class three, uh, no benefit. And in patients with STEMI, emergence, uh, emergency cabbage should not be performed after failed PCI in, in this uh, scenario, if the absence, uh, in the absence of ischemia or large area of myocardium at risk, or if the surgical revascularization is not feasible because of uh, an reflow uh, state or a poor uh, distal uh, target. And this uh, diagram uh, summarizes what uh, we just uh, mentioned. Moving to uh, another area of um, uh, reperfusion strategy, which is, uh, should we uh, revascularize uh, all, uh, uh, all uh, stenosed uh, vessels or the culprit uh, lesion only? So in, in selected hemodynamically stable patient with STEMI and multivessel disease after successful uh, primary PCI, then a staged PCI of a significant non-infarcted area uh, is recommended to reduce uh, the risk of death and uh, MI as a class one. And then selected patients with STEMI with complex multivessel non-infarct artery disease after successful primary PCI, then uh, elective cabbage is reasonable to reduce the risk of cardiac events as a class 2A. For uh, selected hemodynamically stable patients with STEMI and, and low complexity multivessel disease, then PCI of non-infarcted area uh, may be considered at the time of the primary PCI to reduce the uh, cardiac events rate, but this is um, class uh, 2B and for only uh, stable patients. And for patients with STEMI complicated by cardiogenic shock, the routine PCI of an uninfarct artery at the time of the primary PCI should not be performed because of the higher risk of death or renal failure as a class uh, three harmful. And this uh, diagram uh, summarizes uh, uh, treatment algorithm for patients with uh, STEMI and uh, whether having cardiogenic shock or not, and to um, involve the uh, other uh, stenosed vessels at the time of the primary PCI or not, or moving to a hybrid approach with a, a primary PCI for the uh, culprit lesion and then uh, whether uh, uh, a delayed uh, a BCI or a cabbage at a later time. And this uh, result was uh, driven from the uh, culprit ch chalk trial, uh, which was um, uh, uh, which uh, involved uh, 706 patients who had an acute uh, MI and uh, complicated by cardiogenic shock. They were randomized to uh, a culprit, a culprit a lesion only PCI and immediate multivessel BCI, and um, they compared uh, the uh, outcome. The primary endpoint were all cause mortality and renal failure requiring a renal uh, replacement uh, therapy at 30 days. And for uh, culprit lesion, uh, lesion only uh, PCI, uh, the primary endpoint and all cause mortality reported as 45%. Uh, 
uh, versus 55% uh, uh, in immediate multivessel PCI. And mortality at one year reported 50% uh, in culprit uh, lesion uh, only PCI versus 56.9% in uh, immediate multivessel PCI. However, the uh, rate of uh, rehospitalization for heart failure were uh, higher in uh, the culprit lesion only PCI group. Uh, this diagram just to um, uh, classify the uh, uh, patient clinical status for the guide of revascularization in terms of elective urgent emergency and emergency or salvageable uh, intervention. So for elective, the patient's cardiac function has been uh, stable in the days or weeks before intervention, whether uh, surgical or uh, interventional. Uh, the intervention could be de uh, deferred even uh, without uh, increased risk of uh, compromise to cardiac outcome. This is uh, an elective uh, procedure. For urgent uh, revascularization, the intervention is required during the same hospitalization to minimize the chance of further clinical deterioration, like, uh, but not limited to uh, worsening sudden chest pain, heart failure, acute MI, uh, intraortic uh, balloon bump, unstable angina with uh, IV uh, nitro infusion or uh, having angina at rest. For emergency uh, intervention, for patient requiring emergency intervention will have ongoing refractory uh, chest pain uh, uh, and uh, with or without hemodynamic instability. And for emergency or salvageable uh, intervention, patients requiring emergency intervention uh, are those who, who require cardiopulmonary resuscitation uh, on the way to the OR or the uh, cath lab. So uh, the effect of uh, timing after infarction of surgical revascularization within six hours after the onset of symptoms is feasible, then the mortality rate is uh, improved over that of a medically treated uh, non-revascularized non uh, patient. But for mortality for non-transmural uh, group, it peaked uh, if the uh, operation was performed within six hours of acute MI, and then uh, the, uh, the mortality decreased. And this, uh, uh, this table uh, showed uh, a, a comparison between uh, the non-transmural uh, MI versus transmural MI with relation to the time between cabbage and MI. And we can see the uh, uh, for transmural group, the peak within the uh, first day, and then uh, the uh, mortality rate uh, decreasing. Uh, while for the non-transmural group, the peak within uh, six hours and then uh, starts to come down. Moving uh, to uh, shock trial, which uh, studied the uh, benefit of early revascularization compared to initial medical uh, therapy on mortality in cases of acute MI complicated with cardiogenic shock. It was a multi-center uh, randomized control trial involved at 302 patients uh, randomized to early revascularization group and initial medical uh, therapy group uh, at uh, 30 different center and the enrollment uh, from uh, 1993 to 1998. And the primary outcome uh, was studied uh, the 30-day mortality and uh, mortality afterwards. And, and the inclusion criteria for, uh, for the shock trial include a suspected cardiogenic shock within 36 hours of acute MI and ECG criteria for acute MI, like uh, what you mentioned and cardiogenic shock by both a clinical and hemodynamic criteria. For the clinical criteria, uh, having hypotension uh, or need for um, uh, anthropic support and evidence of end organ hypoperfusion and for hemodynamic criteria, having a low cardiac uh, index and high uh, pulmonary capillary which pressure. And they excluded patient with uh, severe systemic illness and other forms of shock and severe valvular heart disease and dilated cardiomyopathy and unsuitable uh, patient for uh, revascularization. 
the intervention has been made uh, for patients were randomly assigned within uh, 12 hours after diagnosis of shock to em emergency revascularization uh, for PCI. 60% uh, 60, uh, 60 of patients underwent a PCI and 40% underwent a cabbage within six hours of randomization with uh, use of intraortic uh, balloon pump. For initial medical therapy, uh, thrombolytic therapy and uh, intraortic balloon pump uh, recommended. And if clinically appropriate, a uh, delayed revascularization allowed at minimum of uh, 54 hours after randomization. And uh, this table uh, showed uh, the uh, mortality among the uh, study uh, population for 30-day uh, mortality uh, in the revascularization group reported at 41% uh, for uh, younger patient less than 75 years of age and with higher uh, mortality uh, rate uh, for patient uh, age of uh, 75 years of old and higher. And the rate of uh, mortality in the medical therapy group was of 56.8 uh, and 53 uh, percent uh, in uh, two uh, age group. And the six month mortality reported in revascularization group as a 50 percent in uh, as a 44.9 percent in younger patient and 79.2 percent in uh, elder patient. And for the medical uh, therapy group, 65% and 56% in uh, young and older patient. And the one year survival, including the early revascularization group was a 46.7%. And for the initial medical uh, therapy group was 33.6% uh, with a B value of less than 0.003. And the treatment benefit was apparent only in patients younger than uh, 75 uh, years of age. And uh, there was a report uh, for the overall survival rate at six years. For the early revascularization group, the overall survival rate at six years reported as 32.8%, while 19.6% uh, survival at six years for the initial medical uh, therapy group. This slide uh, from uh, the European Society of uh, Cardiology 2019 uh, coronary revascularization recommendation. It's almost uh, the same like uh, what you mentioned in the American uh, guidelines. It's recommended that for patient with uh, emergency coronary angiography, in case of uh, heart failure, cardiogenic shock, complicating uh, acute coronary syndrome as a class one, and if the coronary anatomy is amenable to BCI, to proceed with emergency BCI of the culprit region only for patient with cardiogenic shock due to STEMI or non STEMI. And if the coronary anatomy is not amenable uh, for BCI, to proceed with emergency cabbage as a class one. And in cases of hemodynamic instability, emergency surgical or catheter based repair of mechanical complications uh, is indicated as declined uh, by the uh, heart team. And in selected patient with uh, acute coronary syndrome and cardiogenic shock, the uh, short-term mechanical security support may be considered depending on uh, age of the patient, morbidities, how is the uh, neurological status of the patient and the function uh, uh, prospective for the long-term survival and predicted quality of life as a class 2B. And surprisingly, the uh, uh, routine use of intraortic balloon bomb in patients with cardiogenic shock due to acute coronary syndrome is not recommended as a class 3. But this is for the routine use of the uh, IBP. This is a review article published in uh, 2000, uh, 2020 uh, for uh, including uh, 5,960 patients. Uh, they looked into the uh, database and they collected patients from the area of uh, 2010 to 2014 from the largest uh, database in the uh, US. And uh, they included patients uh, older than uh, 30 years old and uh, diagnosed with a STEMI who underwent cabbage within the first seven days after non-elective hospital admission. 
and they divided the uh, study population uh, based on the timing of surgery within uh, 24 hours as a group A, and in the second and third day as a group B, and uh, on fourth to seventh day as a group C. And this uh, diagram uh, is showing the postoperative complication in terms of cardiac complication, respiratory, and renal, and uh, bleeding in the different um, uh, study cohorts. Uh, first column is the uh, for the first uh, group within 24 hours, and the second column for the uh, patient who were uh, operated within the second or third day, and the third column uh, for the patient operated at day four to day seven. And we can see uh, significantly higher higher postoperative complication in patients who were operated on the first day. And overall, hospital mortality uh, were higher on patients of, of who uh, who were operated on the first uh, first day of hospitalization. For uh, they conclude that patients who underwent uh, cabbage within the first twenty four hours after non elective admission have increased hospital morbidity and mortality, and the uh, delay of surgery after the uh, first 24 hours may be beneficial to uh, patient outcome. And uh, they report a significant cost effectiveness uh, when the patient delay uh, surgery because uh, the hospital length of stay is reduced as well as the subsequent hospital cost. This is another uh, retrospective uh, review article included uh, uh, 3,060 patients with isolated cabbage with a prior MI from, the, from 2008 to 2014, and it was published in, uh, in 2017. They classified the uh, study cohort for patients operated within uh, one day one to two days, uh, three to seven days, and after uh, eight days. And the adjusted in hospital mortality for, uh, for the group one who were operated on less than one day is 5.4%. And after one day, uh, the uh, in hospital mortality decreased to 1.8%. And uh, after three to seven uh, days, 1.7%. And after eight days, uh, slight increment up to 2.3%. Uh, and they did conclude that patients operated on one to two days and three to seven days after MI had a similar mortality rate, suggesting it may be possible to reduce the MI to cabbage interval for some patients without sacrificing uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the outcomes. And uh, for patients operated on uh, within uh, one day after MI had a higher mortality rate. And this is another uh, review article uh, published in 2017. Uh, they looked into uh, the uh, cabbage and how early uh, is uh, is to uh, proceed with the, with the surgery after uh, onset of a STEMI. And they conclude that in patients with acute STEMI, there was a significant increase in mortality among patients who underwent uh, cabbage within the 24 hours of their event. And uh, they reported for the subgroup analysis that uh, female patients and patients over 65 years and, uh, had a significant odds for mortality. And we can see a consistent uh, result for patients who were operated early in case of uh, acute STEMI. So uh, what are the advantages of cabbage in, uh, in STEMI and cardiogenic shock? It offers uh, the longest uh, patency of revascularized arteries, and it does offer a complete revascularization in some uh, cases. And, uh, uh, it has a difficult distal obstruction um, when, when in cases of difficult distal obstruction can be reached uh, through a surgical uh, revascularization and in controlled, it does uh, provide a controlled uh, reperfusion uh, to the uh, reverse ischemic injury and uh, to reduce the reperfusion injury. 
and it interrupts the progression of ischemia and necrosis and limits the infarct size. However, the disadvantages of uh, early cabbage, it carries a high mortality, but the results are not uh, from a randomized uh, trial. Like we discussed, the uh, majority of it review uh, retrospective trials. And uh, another disadvantage of early cabbage is the availability of service in the community setting. So the uh, characteristics associated with a better early outcome after MI is having um, preserved uh, LV uh, ejection fraction with male patient, younger patient, and subendocardial versus uh, transmural MI, and of course the uh, the right timing. Some of the uh, intraoperative uh, considerations. Uh, cardiopulmonary bypass uh, should be established as fast as possible to uh, decompress uh, the ventricle and uh, hence we, we can decrease the wall tension and reduce the oxygen consumption and uh, decrease uh, the muscle damage and improve functional outcome. With ventricular decompression, uh, we can reduce uh, metabolic energy consumption by 60%. And uh, with the systolic uh, basal uh, arrest, it does reduce the uh, metabolic energy consumption by 30%. And with additional cooling of the patient and heart has an uh, impact on the uh, final 10% of basal energy requirement. And of course, with uh, providing adequate uh, myocardial uh, pro protection uh, strategies after each distal and uh, uh, last distance Moses and after removal of uh, over the cross clamp. Moving uh, lastly to uh, use of uh, intraortic uh, balloon bump. Uh, the IABB shock 2 trial, uh, it's a randomized controlled trial. Uh, they looked into patients with uh, acute MI complicated with cardiogenic shock who were undergoing early revascularization and optimal uh, medical therapy to uh, IABB versus uh, non-IABB group. They uh, screened uh, almost uh, 790 patients and the uh, number of enrolled patients uh, were uh, 600, almost 300 in each uh, study cohort. Uh, they reported the all uh, the three day uh, thirty day sorry outcomes with no survival benefit in the uh, cohort with IBB uh, support, and at six to twelve months of follow up, uh, they reported no significant difference in mortality or reinfarction, repeat revascularization, or stroke, and the uh, all cause uh, mortality at uh, at six years uh, reported. 66.3% uh, with, uh, with the use of intraortic balloon pump versus 67% uh, in the control group without uh, intraortic balloon pump. And uh, we can see also the uh, stroke rate at uh, six years reported 1% uh, in IPP group versus 6.2% uh, in the uh, control group. And they did conclude in the IPP shock 2 trial that the uh, intraortic balloon pump has no effect on all cause mortality at six years, long term follow up, and the mortality is still very high with the, the two thirds of patients with cardiogenic shock dying despite uh, the uh, treatment with revascularization therapy. Uh, moreover, a recent review of uh, mul multiple uh, trials, uh, seven trials included uh, 790 patients, uh, sh uh, sh it does show that uh, intraortic balloon bomb may have a beneficial effect on some hemodynamic uh, parameter, but did not uh, result in survival benefit in case of uh, uh, cardiogenic shock. This was the end of uh, my presentation, and thanks for listening.
ثانك يو ثانك يو خالد يعطيك العافيه فيري نايس برزنتيشن دكتور حمد يو هاف كومنت الو هلا 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 كان يو هير مي يس يس دكتور حمد تفضل سوري اي واز لوك داون تفضل خالد ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور ذس كومبريهنسيف ريفيو اس خالد شود ذا نمبر اند ذا ستديز اند ذا شوك ترايل از وي ار سيجن اول اوف يو نو ذات ذيس ار ذا وورس كيسز وي جيت ريفيرد سو اتس جود تو هاف ا what we say a theme or, or a pathway in your mind when and only when you're going to take a patient like this in the operating room. It's good. It's easy for us now as surgeons that these cases are taken away from us by the cardiology. But most of the time in the tough cases, the one that has a triple vessel disease or left main or not amenable for PCI. And here it's a judgment call and a center experience, surgeon experience and uh, outcome experience in general. Uh, but don't be pushed, my message to all of you is don't be pushed by any cardiologist to take any STEMI uh, to the to the OR and should always avoid it. If there is no mechanical complication, always uh, press on them and be available to help them if they need any mechanical support assist uh, to open the culprit vessel and uh, the rest can be dealt with later. Uh, the other approach that is understudied these days, and I think in the future it will be more studied, is uh, any patient comes with acute MI, STEMI, and, and cardiogenic shock before end organ happen, end organ failure happen, is insertion of ampulla and uh, any mode of revascularization, hopefully better with PCI. Uh, the mechanical complication, uh, as Khaled mentioned and, and listed them, um, these are the ones that also uh, uh, we, we get involved a lot. Uh, the mortality is high, as we all know, especially VSDs. Um, and uh, any patient who has uh, acute insult, it's always a judgment call and it's good to have a pathway of how to approach it. Anybody has any question for me? Khaled, do you have any question? Hello. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Hamid. Uh, any any anybody um, has a question for Dr. Hamid? Any question? Any comment for Khalid? يعطيكم العافية. We'll resume our activity إن شاء الله at 2.15 إن شاء الله. Thank you so much. Thank you دكتور حمد. يعطيك العافية. من 3.15 2.15 2.15 After 15 minutes. Thank you.
السلام عليكم uh, the next uh, speaker is uh, دكتور فراس he will discuss the uh, the coronary trial as a journal club uh, دكتور فراس the mic is yours السلام عليكم السلام ورحمة الله Bismillah. So the last presentation will be a journal club meeting discussing coronary trial. My name is Faraz Fatani, a cardiac surgery resident from King Abdulaziz University Hospital in Jeddah. So a little bit of historical note. Um, revascularization started in uh, 19, attempts started in 1951 when Van Berg and Miller de demonstrated internal thoracic artery implantation into the myocardium. It didn't um, show a benefit of uh, proper revascularization and in subsequent studies. In 1954, Murray and colleagues did some experimentation, uh, exper experiment uh, studies of anastomosis in uh, lab uh, or experiment uh, animals and as you can see there uh, the illustration of uh, of such experiment and their technique in the right in 1958 direct coronary endarterectomy in angina pectoris patient was uh, achieved 1961 the, the use of cardiopulmonary bypass for revascularization was uh, started to occur in 1964 the first anastomosis of internal thrust R3 to LAD by uh, Kolsov in Russia uh, without uh, the use of a cardiopulmonary bypass machine. So since then, the advancement of both uh, cardiopulmonary bypass machine and uh, the use of, pump, of uh, on pump and off pump techniques for reverse, for coronary artery bypass grafting started to have advances. And the comparative study between those uh, techniques uh, uh, was needed. So here are some of notable comparative studies. And as you heard previously by uh, Dr. Ramjad with, with his uh, good literature review, uh, some of the studies that compare off-pump and on-pump uh, uh, procedure, you can see coronary trial involving 4,752 patients. And uh, this is the study we are going to discuss today. The Ruby trial involving 2,203 patients. The Danish off-pump, on-pump uh, uh, trial involving 900 patients from Denmark. The German on-pump, off-pump uh, in elderly trial involving 2,539 patients from Germany. So here in coronary trial, the research question was coronary uh, randomized controlled trial with blinded adjudication of outcome in which off-pump coronary artery bypass grafting and on-pump coronary artery bypass grafting were compared in patients who were undergoing isolated coronary artery bypass graft. So their uh, PICO, the population, where patient undergoing isolated coronary artery bypass grafting. The intervention was off-pump coronary artery bypass grafting. The comparison was on-pump coronary artery bypass grafting, and the outcome was ma any major clinical event. So their primary hypothesis was that off-pump coronary artery bypass grafting would be associated with fewer major clinical events in the short term, 30 days, uh, compared to on-pump coronary artery bypass grafting, and that the benefit of off-pump coronary artery bypass grafting would be maintained in the long term after five years. So what was, uh, uh, what was the significance of the study? The author postulated that their study uh, with such power and large population size could show a moderate but clinically significant difference in mortality, myocardial infarction, stroke, and renal failure. And that would reflect 
its benefit in uh, saving lives, money, and uh, time, and uh, would be relevant to the practice. So um, conflict of interest, the, the, the only conflict of interest was reported by one of the primary investigators, uh, and he reported receiving grants from multiple uh, uh, medical supply uh, companies. And there were no other potential conflict of interest that were reported. What is its correlation to previous research and practice? And does the study add anything new? So as mentioned before, with the large number of participants, um, this study has sufficient power as claimed by the authors. And they uh, included, and they put an inclusion criteria for the uh, surgeon to have at least two year uh, uh, two year experience after, after completion of uh, residency training with at least 100 uh, operation in either technique, either off pump or on pump. And they did a five year follow up for their patients. So the design was a randomized controlled trial with blended education uh, of outcome. The potential bias were, were one of the uh, few of the bi potential biases were selection bias, and they tried uh, and they did randomization to minimize that performance bias. As we can see in in procedure, blinding is uh, um, is difficult to be achieved either for patient and uh, for ph physician. Double blinding cannot uh, is not easy. Ethical consideration, the study was approved by national regulatory authorities and the ethics committee at each participating center. So their selection, inclusion and exclusion criteria. The inclusion criteria was divided into three categories, patient above age of 70, patient between the age of 60 and 69, and patient between 55 and 59. Uh, in patient uh, above uh, age of 70, they included any patient who had required cabbage and had peripheral arterial disease, cerebral vas cerebrovascular disease or carotid stenosis more than 70% or had renal insufficiency. In patients between 60 and 69, they included uh, um, participants who required cabbage with uh, the following risk factor, diabetes, urgent revascularization, uh, left ventricular rejection fraction of less than 35%, history of smoking within last uh, year. And in patients between 55 and 59, they included uh, uh, them if they had two or more of the previous risk factors. So the number of unrollees was uh, uh, 4,759. Exclusion uh, where any patient who had planned valve surgery, contraindication indication to either uh, technique of pump or on pump, uh, limited life expectancy, emergency or repeat uh, coronary artery bypass grafting, or previous enrollment in the coronary trial. So their follow-up, they did it by using in-person. The study personnel conducted it using in-person or telephone follow-up with patient or their next of, uh, of kin at 30 days and at one year after the procedure and on a yearly basis until the end of the trial. If patient indicated that any outcome event had occurred, the patient's physician was contacted to obtain source documents regarding the event. So the, their final follow-up, uh, visit was 98.8%. 97.3% were uh, was uh, done through uh, in-person or telephone call to the patient or his next uh, in keen. The rest of the 1.8% uh, study personnel were able to determine that these patients uh, had died through local databases. So the variables that uh, were used is, uh, were death, myocardial infarction, stroke, renal failure requiring dialysis, repeat revascularization, blood transfusion, 
recurrent angina, and cerebrovascular death. The time to the first occurrence of any one of the components of the primary outcome was described with the use of uh, Kaplan-Meier survival curve, and the comparisons between the two treatment groups were performed with log rank test. The treatment effect is expressed as the hazard ratio with 95% confidence interval. So the potential confounding factor, what I found uh, age, sex, and clinical history, uh, sur surgeon experience, and uh, so on. So in data collection, uh, the included participant were run between uh, either arm, arms of pump or on pump. Um, of pump included 2,375. The, uh, the, the method of randomization I didn't find by reading the study. <coughs> they didn't mention it. Um, in the arm of off pump coronary arpas, uh, uh, coronary artery bypass crafting, they included 2,375 patients. 2,148 received cabbage in the 30, in, within the th first 30 days of randomization, and 43 didn't uh, receive uh, off-pump cabbage within the 30 days after uh, randomization. 184 converted to on-pump uh, cabbage within the 30 days after randomization. And they used intention to treat, so the, their uh, total, uh, their um, off-pump coronary artery bypass grafting arm had 2,375 uh, patients. And the on-pump uh, coronary artery bypass grafting, the arm had 2,377 patients. 2,183 received on pump coronary artery bypass grafting within the 30 days. 44 did not receive uh, the surgery within the first 30 days of randomization. And 150 converted to off pump coronary artery bypass grafting for the following reason that you can see. So here are the baseline characteristics. As you can see, the uh, baseline character, uh, there were no significance in the baseline characteristic and uh, um, it was demonstrated by using the uh, anal has analysis in the left side. So there were similarities. You can see that uh, uh, renal failure requiring dialysis was, uh, there was 40 percent in the off-pump group compared to 25 percent in the on-pump group, but, but, but um, it was not uh, clinically significant. So here is the results. Uh, this is the Kaplan-Meier survival curve. After five years, the off-pump technique did not improve the primary composite outcome of death, MI, stroke, or renal failure requiring dialysis up to five years of follow-up. And the result after uh, 30 days of follow-up, as you can see, the uh, there was there were no significance in uh, in de clinic uh, any clinical significance in death uh, per, uh, number of myocardial infarction stroke or renal failure in uh, both groups, but there is clinical significance in uh, the number of uh, of uh, requ patient requiring blood transfusion favoring off pump and. Uh, respiratory complication favoring also off pump, repeat revascularization favoring uh, on pump.
there is also a diff, uh, there were differences in the number of uh, graft per patient required uh, more in the on pump uh, group After one year, there were also no clinically significant difference between the on-pump and off-pump in, uh, in the primary outcome of uh, death, myocardial infarction, stroke, and need for repeat revascularization. But in the sub-study, there were uh, clinically significant um, decreased number of uh, acute kidney injury in the off-pump group. But uh, and th there was uh, there were after, we will see after five years there were, the acute kidney injury did not the reduction in, in acute kidney injury did not improve the uh, renal function in both group after the five year follow up. So after five years there is also no clinical significance in in death or MI stroke or uh, need of repeat revascularization. So the finding, the off-pump technique did not improve the primary composite outcome of death, MI, stroke, or renal failure requiring dialysis up to five years of follow-up. Off-pump cabbage reduced the need for transfusion, pre-operation for bleeding, acute kidney injury, and respiratory complications within 30 days. But unfortunately, preventing of acute kidney injury at 30 days was not associated with the preservation in long-term renal function. Slightly fewer bypass grafts were performed with off-pump cabbage, and there was no reduction in uh, stroke with off-pump cabbage. And they uh, uh, stated that this is due, may be due to the um, crossover between the, the two groups. So now I've finished my presentation. Thank you. If you have any comments or uh, questions, you are free to ask. Thank you, Dr. Firas. Uh, any question, any uh, comment for uh, Dr. Firas? Okay, I think we can conclude at this uh, point. Thank you so much for 